again. So I just completed my first Go Ruck Heavy in South Beach, Miami, and I wanted to show everyone uh, my loadout and do some uh, after action recording on my whole experience, give some tips and advice, and make sure uh, that I mention everything that I possibly can to help you train for your Go Ruck Heavy as well. So I wanted to start out with the loadout first, and then I'll go into the AAR. Um, but before I do, I uh, so I did mine in South Beach, Miami. The weather was pretty good. I think it was about uh, low 60s. Uh, it was about low. It was about 50 degrees at night, and it kind of rose into the 70s. So I had pretty decent weather, except for at night when it got pretty chilly and in the ocean, soaking wet. But for the most part, I was pretty good by wearing light, light clothing. So I'm gonna start with um, I'm gonna start with my clothes first, and then I'm just gonna ramble and go into it. Um, so if I leave anything out, just uh, make a comment or um, just let me know. So okay, so let's start with the clothes. What I wore. So obviously, hat always important. Uh, also, I'm a l very, very sore. I just, I just finished this last night, so I'm still a little tender. But um, okay, so <coughs> this is the shirt that I wore. I wore this for my challenge as well. Always held up good and tough. Uh, this is a pro combat uh, Nike dry fit shirt. Um, it's dry right now. It dried up pretty quickly when I was soaking wet. Uh, extremely, extremely reliable. Also, in the back, it's kind of vented to to help, you know, help your back breathe a little more. This was a amazing shirt. I put this through literally hell, and uh, it held up for you know 24 hours, plus uh, other challenges, and it's still pretty good. So uh, this was great. Um, for my um. For my pants, I wore a Nike Pro Combat compression pants um, I, instead of the shorts because I wanted to give a little more protection to the knees. That's the first mistake I made with uh, doing a challenge is I fucked up my knees because uh, you know you're on the ground for a good percentage of the time and you could do a lot of damage. So I brought the compression pants and I actually these are Nike. Um, running pants as well. These were like kind of like the slim, uh, kind of like the slim pants, but um, you know they're not tactical pants. They're not, uh, you know, they're not really like heavy pants. They're actually pretty light. They breathe pretty well. They dried up really, really, really fast, which I was very happy about. And um, these surprisingly held up really well as you can see I was on my I was everywhere rolling around doing low crawls bear crawls burpees my knees were just like could have been torn up and these held up really well for it being so flimsy and it kept my knees pretty uh, pretty protected I mean they're still a little bruised of course but um, definitely worth it so these uh, these were awesome and they had little pockets with little zippers in it. It's exactly what I needed. Kept me light, kept me moving. Next thing. Um, wore these gloves. Uh, we still have a ton of sand in them. These were, I wore these for my heavy for about 85% of the time. Um, I also had a really deep cut on my finger and um, I had to keep my finger kind of protected, but this held a great grip on whatever I was carrying, and it avoided further injuries while I still had my band bandaid on. I use these for the challenge as well, and um, these are awesome because they have little, um, like, kind of little hooks, or oh, a little, uh, yeah, little circular things in there, so you can strap them onto your molly while you're not using them, make it quick access, and they're easy to pull off as well. These. You know, these dry pretty quickly, protect your hands. These are um, um, 
uh, Mechanics. They're Mechanics. Um, very well-known brand within the GoRuck community, and uh, they're really they worked out really well. Um, they're still good as new. Um, now for my feet, my shoes. Um, definitely the most important thing. Um, well, one of the most important aspects of uh, keeping you uh, sane throughout your night and day and night again. Um, I chose the Solomon, uh, what is it, X, it's like XA3D Ultra 2 GTX um, shoe. Um, these worked out fantastic. You know, I chose I chose these over boots because last time I did my challenge with the boots, um, I got sand in them, and once you get sand in your boots, it is the most painful experience. Constantly stepping in the same exact spot on your boots, and they took forever to get on and off. These were awesome because, unlike regular shoelaces, these have the quick sealing laces. They just you know you pull right up, and then you just tuck this under the little leave right here tuck that under and you're good to go and other way to untie makes it really easy to get in and out your feet so also you know any breaks that you do get you make sure you check your feet as often as possible to make sure that everything's good you're not blistering and um, with these I uh, with my with my setup I didn't have any blisters on my feet. I kept the same socks, which are um, darn tough uh, merino wool socks. Uh, these are still a little wet, actually. I wore only one pair of socks the entire time. Um, yeah, I only wore one pair of socks the entire time. But I changed out my liner socks, which are in Jinji. Uh, they're like toe socks, and these kind of helped uh, prevent against uh, my blistering. Um, I got two pairs of these, and I only had to change them out. Only changed them out once, and you know these, you know these did the trick. These did really well. Um, so I got really lucky. I didn't have any blisters, um, and my feet stayed dry. Uh, well, I mean, they were constantly wet, but they dried up as, as much as possible. These are pretty good for ventilation, too. Also, in comparison to boots, uh, the Solomons were ex they were pretty light on my feet, and that was, uh, that was important. And um, the traction was good, held up pretty well on the sand, and um, I really don't have any complaints. Uh, there's still a, a ton of sand in them. Oh, my God. I tore these up, but they did really well. I was very, very, very happy with them. So, okay, on to the good stuff. Um, oh, also, another thing about the hat is you definitely, you definitely need a hat um, for really any Go Ruck event, just to protect your face. You know, it, it can get hot out there, especially down in South Florida, and you know your face can burn up. And this really, you know, you know, it's a hat that keeps you protected, and it's it's really essential to to bring one. This is the this is the hat that I got from GoRuck. Uh, this is the GR Tac. Worked great. Um, no complaints. Dried up quick, and uh, it's really important. So. All right, on to the good stuff. This is my, oh, it's, uh, okay. So, this is, this was, uh, yeah, so this was my, my ruck for the 24 plus hours that I did. And uh, this, I chose the GR0, a little smaller than the GR1, and it's exactly what I needed. Um, it held everything that I needed, and of course, it held up amazing. It held up. I have zero complaints from using my ruck. It was obviously it was sandy. I got you know I got a lot of friction from the bag, but you know any bag that you use that's 
you know, it's not preventable. Um, so I'm going to start with the outside first and then I'm going to go, you know, top layer and then I'm going to go into the guts. Um, right here I have, um, I got a, a reflective patch um, from GoRock.com. This kind of was my whole reflective setup. So I had a reflective patch from GoRock and then I had uh, this belt which um, uh, was fine with the standards of um, it was fine with the standards of it being a reflective belt. I didn't want it wrapped around my bag because it's kind of a pain in the ass to kind of open it up and then like the belt falls off. This worked fantastic because if you ever need to get in your top zipper, you just open it up, get in your zipper, and then close it back up and you're good to go. Great reflection. Also, I got this uh, little wrap, uh, this little uh, handle that I got from All Day Ruck, which I also got the, uh, the um, reflective band from. And this also has a, a, another reflective um, portion of it. So my bag stayed lit up, so I was pretty safe. Um, also attached these on with uh, some carabiners. And this was really good for um, a variety of exercises that um, I did throughout the throughout my 24 hours. Okay, so now let's move to the back. Okay, so um, first off, I had a stabilizing belt that I got from GoRod.com. Uh, this one was the small. I should have gotten the large because this one was a little too tight for me. I think it's basically a little too tight for anybody really. Um, but luckily, whenever I was doing kind of like any kind of exercises on the ground, this was extremely useful because this helped prevent the bag from flipping over your head, um, which just makes everything so like so much more difficult. So. Um, this belt held up very well as well, held up very well, and um, I highly recommend it using it for any challenge or any heavy or even any light. Um, stabilizing belts work and they're extremely useful. Um, so yeah. Um, next we'll move on to the straps. Um, so this is my hydration hose. Um, I got a little uh, magnetic clip that I got from Amazon. Uh, this was one of the most useful things for the outside of my back, outside of my pack, because um, putting on the hose on the web dominators, um, which these are web dominators, I have them um, in these exact locations because um, this side obviously kept the hose pretty close to the ruck. And these, if I had any kind of accessories or I needed to access anything quickly, I kept them a little lower uh, because, you know, it just makes things a lot easier. If it's all the way up here, you can't really access my gloves that fast. I, this is where I usually just kept my gloves. Um, I really didn't use this one, but, you know, it was good for just in case. Um, so, uh, what was I saying? Oh, so, it's the web, do the web dominators aren't really... Um, easy to close all the time because you kind of got to pull it and then you got to squeeze it on and then wrap it around and then like then you're good to go and like if you ever need to undo it you have to pull it open with the magnetic clip just sticks on you know it's not the most uh, stable I mean it's not the most like reliable either but for the most part when you're going long distances and you're constantly moving stuff over your head and over your shoulders, you know, this, it was extremely useful. I also got a stabilizer, uh, not a stable, a sternum strap uh, that I also got from GoRock.com. Uh, this was, this is essential for any heavy really because this, the sternum strap keeps um, the straps closer to your traps, which also helps out with um, carrying Whole, a whole lot of weight and this also helps with um, your stabilization if you're ever on the ground so um, 
these, you know, these are essential. Um, even the web dominators are essential as well. And um, also, um, for the hose, oh, I'll get I'll get into the hose when I get in the rug. Um, but let's start with the outside. So this, on the inside, the laptop compartment is where I kept my weight. This is the good stuff. Look up in the name. Um, so this was uh, my 23 pound weight. Uh, this was actually a little too light. Um, it didn't necessarily. Uh, well, it. My weight was perfectly fine because um, with the 23 pounds I had extra equipment and gear and um, I had extra equipment and gear that it equaled up to I think it was 37 pounds which is cutting it really close to meet the standards. Um, so 23 pounds I was a little too light because kind of had to scourge around and um, make use of other items that you can use that are heavier or add any kind of additional weight. This one was too light. Uh, if I had to do it again, I would use definitely a bigger one. Um, but metal plates are the way to go instead of like kind of like lead belts or you know any kind of other loose stuff. This stays right in the pack. It goes in, it goes out. You can throw it around easily and um, it wasn't that bad on my back at all. Like I didn't have any problems with it, no pain whatsoever. And um, this was extreme. It was, you know, steel plates are the way to go. Ugh. Okay, so, um, oh, so let's start with the front. Open up my PT, my PT belt, my uh, my reflection belt. And right in the front pocket is your headlamp. This is the Black Diamond Storm. Um, I had the I had the Revolt, but uh, it died on me because the Revolt, uh, the Black Diamond Revolt, uh, isn't waterproof, uh, which I found out during my challenge. Because So this is uh, the Black Diamond uh, Storm. I had the Black Diamond Revolt, um, <clears throat> but I fig I found out that that wasn't uh, waterproof uh, during my challenge when one of my lights died out, and I wasn't able to turn it on. Uh, so don't make that mistake. Um, I actually sent it um, back to uh, customer service, and they sent me one. They sent me a storm, uh, no charge at all whatsoever, and. Uh, the storm worked great. I didn't have to replace the batteries once. They held out all throughout the night. Um, and probably the best headlamp that you can use for this event because they're extremely durable. They're really reliable. They have um, red, the red lights, which are extremely essential. Uh, you use the red lights just as much as the white ones, uh, depending on who your cadre is. Some guys like to um, stay dark. Um, so. Definitely get the storm though, because storm is is waterproof. <clears throat> and um, let's see what else I have here. Um, this is a quest bar for snacks. Um, I have something else. In, oh, I kept my gloves uh, basically in my in my front sleeve. My gloves and my headlamp, because with your headlamp. <clears throat> For the heavy, you're going to be using it multiple times, and you're going to be quick accessing it, including your gloves as much as possible. So definitely leave whatever you're going to take out as fast as possible in your front sleeve. So, okay, let's get to the main one. The zipper is a little tough to open because of just all the sand. Uh, and this is a little pain to open because, as you can see, everything in here is completely disgusting and dirty 
and sandy and still a little wet. Um, this is a mess because the first 10 minutes they tell you to open up your rug, dump everything out, um, they inspect it, they pretty much strip away your food almost immediately. Um, any kind of gums, goos, gels, whatever, they took everything away from us like immediately. Luckily, I kind of, um, just reading other reports and reading other articles about the heavy, I kind of saw that coming. So I kind of, uh, came a little prepared. Um, but I'll get all, well, I'll just go into it now. Um, so I kind of came prepared, and so I brought one thermal of just uh, nuts. Just nuts and kind of, yeah, just nuts, cashews, uh, dark chocolates, cranberries, basically uh, a shit ton of carbs and all the fatty nuts. A good nut. These actually feel pretty good. Um, and this was good because when I was hungry, I would just, boom, eat it and take it away. But I didn't eat until probably towards the, towards, towards the middle. So, um, this is also good because, you know, I kept the water out if it was going to get wet, but I really didn't have to deal with that. So, um, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, so you had to pretty much dump out your rock, like, constantly, just throw everything out, and then throw everything back in, so you kind of want to be prepared to just take, um, basically just take all your stuff, throw it out, and throw it back in, in, like, a very short amount of time. I should have been a little more prepared with like how everything was like compacted uh, because you want to make sure that your hydration pack is like quickly accessible like constantly because you're going to be refilling it like crazy. I had I had a little strap that came on the back of the of the mall that I tied to the back of the molly. This is like a tiny tiny carabiner that I clipped on here but I didn't really even end up using it because I just kept refilling water like over and over and over again. Um, oh, so this is the Camelback um, military spec uh, hydration bladder. This was awesome. Um, you know, a lot of people have the source bladders, but I chose to do the Camelback because um, I kind of liked uh, the quick access, like open up, and it's still like um, low profile. So, you know, this carries three liters, and you just twist it open, pop it off whatever tablets you have fill up your water and then just um, and then just refill it like constantly over and over again uh, so this was an excellent bladder I think I probably still have sand in it um, but this was extremely useful and the hose the hose was very very good too because unlike the the uh, the valves the source bladder has where you kind of bite it open and then you have to like kind of close it with your teeth This is this part is protected and you just bite it suck it and then fills it up again and uh, This has like a kind of control valve as well to keep it uh, To keep it not from leaking. Um, I saw a lot of the source bladders uh, Not the actual bladder leak, but a lot of a lot of times you thought that the 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 bite valve was closed and it was actually open and people were spraying water all over the place. I had, um, at, at one point I had, uh, actually half of the, half of my uh, heavy was with someone else's ruck. Um, and they, I used a source bladder for basically half, um, the entire night and half of the day. Um, and I definitely would choose my Camelback over the source, but that's just my opinion. Um, this was a dry sack. I chose a, uh, it was like an event compression sack. This is where I kept all my clothing. Um, basically kept everything dry. And I also put my, uh, my wet clothes in here too, which is kind of stupid, but I wasn't really thinking at the time. 
Um, I just had uh, extra dry fit shorts, which I never used. Um, I also had my Injinji socks. These are the ones that um, I originally had on uh, during the first half of the day. And um, they're dry now, actually. But, so I had two of these. And um, what else did I have in here? I also had um, an extra pair of, um, I don't know what kind of socks these were. Uh, oh, wigwam. Uh, wigwam hiking shoe, hiking socks. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of these. I really like the darn tough merino wools because those are those drain water. I mean, those keep water out much easier. That's what I noticed, and they're kind of thicker, so it kind of helps with like the base of your foot and the cushioning. So this is why, even though I had dry socks that went that could go over the Injinji, I stuck with the the merino wool. And um, if I had to do my heavy again, I would have had two merino wool socks. Um, instead of this pair. But I brought it anyways because, you know, you never know. And that's the best thing about the heavy. Um, so, that's the dry sack. Um, this, I chose to go with uh, a bunch of Pelican cases because they're waterproof and so I had different compartments where I could just open it up, boom, get whatever I needed, close it up. So this kind of was my uh, my first aid slash um, healing. This is my healing kit, I guess you can call it. This is the Pelican 1050. I had uh, mouthwash, eye drops, um, ibuprofen, Tiger Balm, uh, Trail Toes, which was uh, I kept applying to my feet, and my my lower back, and my shoulders. Uh, the Tiger Bomb was awesome because I put it on my traps or in the middle of it and this was awesome for my traps just to kind of relieve some of the muscle tension that I got. Um, someone told me to bring uh, a toothpaste, uh, toothpaste and a toothbrush. Uh, they said because it's like the most um, reinvigorating feeling, kind of brushing your teeth or in the middle of the ruck. I really, I really... Um, I really believe that. I really believe that. Um, but I never used it because I didn't. I really didn't have that much time. Like, I, not at all. Um, Neosporin, which was for my bandage, really, but for anybody's, you know, injuries as well. I kept. I had to constantly kept changing out my band because I had really deep cut. And um, this is um, um, also antibiotic ointment as well, which is another Neosporin, and some band-aids and some Q-tips. For, uh, all the sand that you have to get out of your ears. Ugh. So, this uh, was my big one. I couldn't fit in any other place, so I had to leave, you know, keep it there. Um, duct tape, which I also like cons considered it part of like the weight. This is pretty heavy, but you know, you never know when you need duct duct tape, like ever. I didn't have to use it luckily, um, but during any kind of you know go rock event, it's always important to have kind of you know quick quick accessing um, useful tools and supplies you know for any kind of the weights or whatever so duct tape is always useful to bring for any kind of event this was a card um, that I made we had to memorize like a bunch of verses beforehand um, a few weeks beforehand we had to learn um, like Miami Miami by Will Smith we had to learn the whole song um, so I, you know, laminated it and I printed it out and I kept it in my pocket, um, you know, just for, um, this, I had also, um, uh, a belt that actually came in handy when we had a, our team weight was a giant ship liner rope, um, which, um, was pretty heavy, but it kept getting loose. So I brought this belt and it actually came in handy because we got to tie the rope around the belt. Uh, the, tied the belt around the rope, sorry. Um, garbage, band-aids, uh, tablets. Um, anything in here? Nothing. Um, 
Okay, so I had uh, some carabiners, just quick accessing stuff. Um, I had kind of these uh, zip, like little twisty rubber ties that, you know, this is what I kept on my bladder. It's kind of hard to see, it's really tiny. I never really ended up using it because, um, like, my source, my, my, uh, my camelback was always, um, like, going in and out, so it was pretty, pretty useless. Um, now let's do the sides. This is where I kept, uh, my phone and my wallet and, uh, keys. I had a C, um, C to Summit dry sack, extra small, um, so I pretty much covered that and put it in a tiny pelican case, closed it in 1020, put it in this pocket and never, never used it once. Just kept it out for the, for the rest of the, uh, for the rest of the walk and kept my phone dry and, uh, safe. I also, uh, brought wrist wraps because I kind of had a, a fracture in my right wrist and I thought I really, um, needed it but I didn't use these once, so I'm actually really surprised that I didn't have to depend on these. Um, but these were good to have. This was kind of the pocket that like, I really wasn't going to go into much. I kind of knew that ahead of time, and that's why I kept it here, because it's kind of out of the way when you open up the ruck. You kind of really need to strategize with what you need, and you know, kind of prioritize with, uh, with everything. Now, this is uh, another quick accessing pocket that I really took advantage of. Um, this is where I kept the Pelican case 1040. Um, this was the perfect size for this for this pocket because it's a little wider than the 1020, so you have a little more room to mess with. Um, and this is where I kept my um, hydration tablets, my extra batteries for my headlamp. I had brought a knife, um, you know, just in case you know how to open up any blisters or kind of need to cut something on the quick, like, quickly, um, so I didn't have to use it, but you never know. Um, I also, I had an extra noon tablet, uh, case, and I put my, uh, military, um, energy gum in here. Every single piece of gum has about 100 milligrams of caffeine in it. These are awesome, uh, but make sure that when you do, the, uh, the ruck, uh, that weeks before you don't drink any caffeine so these really kick in when you need them to um, just a heads up but I I only I didn't I, I started uh, I started chewing it uh, probably towards the middle of the event because you know I kind of wanted to get all my possible energy that I had out and then I had you know the caffeine to kick in um, so uh, that was really useful but this was you know, this was the pocket to pretty much use it for. Put all the tablets in and just constantly refill. But, you know, this top sleeve, this top pocket was the way to go. So, and, um, is that everything? Yeah, so that's really everything that I brought. Um, I wish that I had some kind of like compartment where I, it was kind of closed, where I could just throw everything out and throw everything back in. Uh, and get kind of easier access to my bladder but really I mean I don't have any complaints with my setup I was pretty happy with um, what I had and what I used and there wasn't anything I really needed you know I stayed dry uh, you know I'm a little cut up and, and bruised and whatnot but honestly going through a heavy you know it's gonna happen regardless you're gonna go through hell and back with your team and it so for the advice that I can give everyone, if everyone want, is crazy enough to do a heavy, um, I highly recommend um, just a couple things, is to make sure that you can pass uh, the physical tests um, the first time with flying colors, and also be able to do the physical test again um, in the middle of in the middle of your heavy, uh, again, the same exact stuff. Um, that is uh, the new 2015 inaugural standards, um, at least for my event, that's what it was. It's probably different with every cadre though. Um, also, rough heavy, 
rux bar. Train your feet up, build your feet up. Um, you know, ruck very, very ruck bar and, and heavy. That's really all I can say. Also, learn how to get really heavy things over your head um, and onto your shoulders properly. You know, learn how to do a clean and press. Um, and really mentally train for it. Um, you know, don't fucking quit. You know, and be prepared to, to not quit. You know, you go in knowing that you can do it. Because if you go in questionable, you're going to have a lot harder time than you think. So, um, those are really, like, also, um, hydrate 72 hours beforehand. Um, you know, stay away from caffeine for the first few weeks before going up to it. Um, definitely, um, after the event, also, you know, take a lot of electrolytes and, um, about 800 to 1,000 milligrams of ibuprofen because, um, you're going to be hurting as I am right now, um, everywhere. I, you can see I'm so banged up and bruised up from the past 24 plus hours, um, and my lower back, my neck, everything is just really fucked up. Um, so, you know, I'm on ibuprofen right now, and I just had a, a Pedialyte, a children's Pedialyte, which has a shit ton of electrolytes, and uh, the proper um, nutrients to get you uh, rehydrated and uh, fully functioning again. You know, the process is going to be slow, but you know, it'll get there. Um, so, yeah, if anybody has any questions, just let me know, and uh, thank you for watching.